of individuals with stroke who have expanded movement repertoires, um, they recover more quickly from stroke. People with uh, Alzheimer's disease who have expanded movement repertoires, uh, they think better and they also move better. Uh, I can say all of those things have been proven conclusively. And I can also say that I know that high massage categorically allows people a greater range of movement and it allows them to think about their movement capacity and potential in different ways than they had thought about it before. I am continuing my conversation with Dr. Blake Martin, who's got a PhD in kinesiology. He's also a Thai massage teacher and practitioner. And in the first part of our talk, Blake shared some amazing ways that you can have informed and expert levels massage that help you work within your scope. And I will post links to that up above and down below. Now, he also started to share about what the research is pointing towards about how Thai massage helps people who have any number of conditions. This week, he shares a lot more of that about how movement helps cognition. He also gives some personal stories of how he has helped uh, clients who have Parkinson's. Lastly, he also shares some amazing tips that you can pass on to your clients just like he does with his about what you do once your Thai massage is done. And that and so much more is coming right up. Now, can we come back to, you were saying, in terms of research, in terms of from a scientific point of view, Yes. Trending towards, you know, careful. Oh, yeah. Where yeah, that's, that's a really good point. So I'm really reluctant to say that there's proof of anything, right? Um, uh, it has to be pretty crazy, conclusive, something or other for me to say that it is this thing or is not the same. Yeah. And particularly with Thai massage, it's the research, the actual research that has been done is in general of quite a poor quality. Um, the there's a bias from the researchers they want to demonstrate oh yes time massage was great and they want to make sure that people know that it was great and so they'll create an experiment that can't really fail so uh, the quality of the research is very poor and in fact with a lot of somatic practice that's the case um, because there just simply isn't the um, the financial willpower to get a study off the ground and people who are frequently really interested in being a good time massage practitioner are not interested in being a good scientist. But what I would say is I would say the following from the clinical research on, on people who have neurological problems and knowing what causes those problems in the brain. And from the research on people who have improved movement capacity and their ability to think differently. And this research is well established in both fields and from the research that suggests that certain brain areas are linked with certain kinds of movement I can put all of those things together and I can say also anecdotally when I look at the clients I've dealt with over the years I know that there are specific benefits that those individuals have received and I can see it I, I've, I've watched as you know a guy who who came in and couldn't stop at the end of the hallway and couldn't turn a corner, I watch as he gets up and he walks up and down the hall and turns corners and stops and starts again. That you means know. he couldn't walk or like- So, so in Parkinson's disease, uh, a really common feature of Parkinson's is something called freezing. And so people will move and then they'll get, um, or, or they want to move and they can't move. Uh, it's a part of your brain called the basal ganglia. It's like the permission center for the brain. Um, and it has to get a coordinated request from all the rest of the brain. And then when it gets that coordinated request, it sends out a command uh, to the, mo uh, the primary motor cortex. and says, go ahead, do your thing. Now, in Parkinson's disease, the individuals who have that, they lack a neurochemical called dopamine. And the dopamine not produced by specific cells in the basal ganglia. And so the permission never comes to move. Uh, so if you've got something like walking, walking, it, it gets farmed out from your brain to your spinal cord, and then you just start doing it. And there's things called central pattern generators in your spinal cord that kind of keep you walking. To turn a corner, you actually have to alter those central pattern generators. Uh, the stride has to be longer on one side and shorter on another, longer, shorter, longer, shorter. That's how you turn a corner. Okay. To stop also, you have to interrupt those central pattern generators. 
So those all involve specific movement commands. So starting, stopping, and turning, those are really uh, challenging things for individuals, especially with advanced Parkinson's, to do. The behavior is that people will want to go and they'll be frozen, they'll be stuck, they can't move. Or if they want to stop, they can't stop. And, uh, or if they want to turn a corner, they can't really turn a corner. And so what they do is they do these little shuffling steps that don't require having one step be broader than another. And that's how they manage to get around a corner. Or stopping is really challenging for them too. They kind of have to do these little shuffling steps to slow down. So after a massage, after I've given individuals with Parkinson's massage, I've watched as they got up off the mat and walked down the hall, freely walked down the hall, stopped, turned corner, and walked back. And that's, that's a huge thing because they weren't going through the freezing pattern. Will it work for everyone? I can't say. My subject pool is very small. It's for four people. Um, so I can't say that that will be the same with everyone. But do you know that it was true for those four guys? The research evidence that improved movement helps cognition and helps people have broader health in movement, that's pretty conclusive. Individuals with stroke who have expanded movement repertoires, um, they recover more quickly from stroke. People with uh, Alzheimer's disease who have expanded movement repertoires, uh, they think better and they also move better. Uh, people with uh, Parkinson's disease who have their movement repertoires expanded either through dance or uh, Tai Chi, um, they have improved movement outcomes and, and thinking outcomes for that matter. I can say all of those things have been proven conclusively. And I can also say that I know that high massage categorically allows people a greater range of movement and it allows them to think about their movement capacity and potential in different ways than they had thought about it before. Because people have greater range of movement after a massage than they do earlier, which, which by the way, incidentally, has in my past year of giving massage, I've been changing what I tell people to do after massage. I used to tell people just, hey, take it really easy. But I've been saying, no, 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 explore new range of movement. Explore, see where your body can go, where it couldn't go before, gently. By doing that, it's like you're literally retraining like neural pathways or? Yes, but you're also, so let's say one of the things that I'm really fascinated by is in Thai massage, uh, uh, we do a weird thing. We really specifically focus on giving people more range of movement. In almost other, all other forms of massage that I have ever received personally, ever. Shats a little bit, trigger work a little bit, but not like Thai massage. In all other forms, there is not a specific focus in changing how much range of motion a person has in their limb, mm -hmm. right? How high can you get this person's arm? That's like, does it move? Let's explore. Let's see how, let's move it around. Let's get, let's get it going. Let's, let's see how far it goes. Oh, it's kind of stuck there. What's going on? And, and that's, that's where we start that we're doing those, we're lubricating the joints. We're doing those movement explorations. If you give someone the capacity for 15 degrees more movement in their hip, say for example, that may translate to the fact that they can step sideways rather than falling over. Wow. Right. Yeah. Well, that's, that's amazing. Exactly. It's, it's very simple, but it's really amazing. Yeah. So I, I think that's, that's a thing that we're doing. That's quite unique. So yes, yes, there's a neurological component to it, but there's also just straight up the, the neurology of the body. Right. And just kind of, um, uh, making sure that those fascial adhesions that we've released, that they stay released, that the person moves into that new area of freedom in their body. And, um, and hopefully they see that as an opportunity, potential for greater expression of who they are, and maybe new opportunities to do different unique things that will change the way they encounter life. Right. It's poetry and art meets science all comes together. Yeah, man. It's like, it's like, it's pretty groovy. <laughs>